I'm going to do the first of a new little group of videos I'm, I'm thinking about. And I'm calling them Five Minutes Toward Freedom. And this first one is just going to be an addressing a topic that somebody asked me about. They wanted to know what's the difference between love and abuse in a relationship. Well, you might be thinking they really don't have anything alike. And, and that would be true, <laughs> except that we're talking about in a relationship. So how they appear, how love and abuse appear in a relationship. I want to borrow three uh, quick points from Leslie Vernick where she talks about mutuality, reciprocity, and freedom. And, and, and talk about those as they relate to a loving relationship. And that is that um, there's a sense or choices are made that infuse a relationship with a mutuality, a balance, a, a pretty similar stable balance in terms of honesty and caring and respect, repentance, you know, spiritual growth. Not that every, not that all the people, we'll say two, in this relationship are going forward at the exact same pace at the exact same time in this exact same direction, but that there is a good balance in there along the way. And reciprocity, that means a reciprocity balance, a give and take in terms of responsibilities and power. There's not an over under sort of a thing. There's a, a sharing back and forth. And, and freedom is, is really key in a loving relationship. First of all, that you can be free to be yourself, the person God made you to be. Not just the person you were maybe when you met or the first little part of your relationship, but really, and that's that would be part of the mutuality and reciprocity of encouraging each other to grow in the ways of the Lord and discover and walk who you are and walk in your purpose. So to be yourself, to a freedom to make choices for yourself. Yes, with the good of the relationship in mind, but that you are free to choose for you. Free to give input and to express your feelings without feeling guilty or ashamed or whatever. And also that you could function and grow, as I mentioned, as a valuable and valued individual in the relationship. I guess balance and value, high levels, mutuality, reciprocity, and freedom. There you go. That's That would be love in a relationship. Now, abuse in relationship, abusive behavior in relationships, first of all, I'd like to say that it can be, they can be either, abuse can be either overt, where it's really obvious, or it can be covert and hidden, where sometimes you may not realize it yourself if it's happening to you, but other people around certainly aren't noticing it. Even once you do, they're not going to get it, probably, unless they're alert and aware of what abuse is. It includes uh, physical, psychological, mental, emotional, financial, sexual, even spiritual aspects in the dynamic. And it's characterized by an, an over-functioning and under-functioning perspective, uh, uh, participants. Uh, it's, it's that balance that we saw in love is missing in abuse uh, in terms of just being who you are, going forward, attention, but also responsibilities, a balance in terms of responsibility. There's a movement underway to widen and clarify this definition by using the term coercive control. And really the goal of abuse is to dominate and subjugate the other partner, the, the target. Now, now that person who was called the victim is being called the target. So some new terminology just for you is course of control and the target versus the perpetrator. I hope this has been helpful. Five minutes toward freedom.